Hello and welcome to another fresh edition of Vivo Pulse. And of course, today we are discussing the role of young Nigerians in the 2023 election that is forthcoming. And of course, a lot of young people are actively getting involved into political offices from 2015. Now, to date, a lot of young people are actively campaigning, warming up for political offices in Nigeria. We'll be going on a break. When we we'll come back, we'll get to start discussions with our guests in the studio. All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, the topic of today is the role of young Nigerians in the forthcoming 2023 election. And of course, we young Nigerians have actually taken uh, the bold step by contesting and some are aspiring to contest for political offices in 2023. And of course, I'm not alone in the studio. I'm with Mr. John Desmond, of course, the leader of the Young Professionals of Nigeria. He's with me in the studio. Hello, sir. Yes, thank you for having me. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you, Mr. How, John. How have you been? Yeah, we've been great and we thank God that the year is moving fine. That's nice. Now, let's quickly, let's quickly get to meet you, then we'll get to the topic of the day. Well, you've called my name. My name is Adaji John Desmond. I'm the leader of Young Professionals of Nigeria. Young Professionals of Nigeria is a body of young people who have distinguished themselves in their various career and human endeavor. What we do is to see how we can be more productive for the future and for the development of our nation. Wow, nice to meet you. Now, of recent, uh, that was the campaign, uh, not uh, <laughs> too young to rule, or what did they call it? Yeah. Uh, that, not that too young to run. run. Sorry, not too young to run. That period, it actually created a lot of wave, and a lot of young Nigerians were able to participate in the Nigerian politics actively, and some were fortunate to get into major political offices in Nigeria. Now, the forthcoming election, now, campaign starts and movement starts from 2022. Now you being a leader among the young Nigerians, what do you see? What do you foresee in this 2023 election? Well, the first thing I foresee is going to be a peaceful election. Uh, from the body language of the gladiators that we are seeing, uh, it's going to be a historical election. Uh, from what we have seen so far, from men and women that are coming out, from what the two a major political party are showcasing. And then from the level of the involvement of the young people, it's going to be interesting and it's going to be one of the peaceful elections that will be held in Nigeria. Now, I, 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 for, from what part of Nigeria are you from? The Middle Belt? Or? Uh, I'm from the North Central. North Central, yes. Middle Belt, North Middle Central, Central, all the same. Now, from your own zone, uh, how many young people are in major political offices actively now? Well, presently, from the Middle Belt, North Central Nigeria, we we, pre, we, we present uh, the youngest governor. Uh, talk of the likes of Yaya Bello, talk of uh, Abubakar uh, Lulu of uh, Niger. So Kogi Niger, you know, they are the youngest governors in Nigeria. And then when you talk of um, um, the, our state house of assemblies, they are made up of young people. And presently, we have a lot of uh, young people who are vying for uh, local governments and councillorship elections within our zone. Now, I want us to quickly run an assessment. You know, me, me and you are both people that <laughs> yes. are always out there to see what is actually happening. Yes. Now, the present electorates, electorates, uh, members, Electoral. electorates that are in the in the in, the, in, the, in power right now, yes. have, uh, the, the the number of young people that are in. Do you foresee more younger people coming in, and based on 
the fact that a lot of young people are clamoring for better Nigeria and better change. Do you think these young people will still have better opportunities to foster and serve Nigeria better and change the dream of Nigeria? Well, the truth is the, 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 the present situation in Nigeria, the only people that can save it and solve it are the young people. Because the old people, they, try, they have tried their best, but the idea they are running with, or they have been running with, has not saved the situation. Therefore, the only people that can save and solve the problem now is the young people. So what do we need to do? We need to come out. Participations will open the way to leadership for us. Because these old people will never, on their own, bring us in. It is only when we participate, when we go through the whole process with confidence, when we attempt to change situation through the legal means, that is when this country will be rescued. Because what is the ideas of the old people? From 1999 to, to 2022, the nation cannot boast of railway from the south to the North. federal capital <laughs> territory. Okay? The nation cannot boast of a workable refinery. Now, what is the cost? Because they are still running with the obsolete ideas, ideas yes. which cannot be consummated in 21st century. The young people need to come out politically. They need to start participating. It is only when they get this power, it is only when they are involved in the electionary process, it is only when they are in politics that their voice can be heard. And whenever your voice is heard, either through policies or through position, changes and expectations cannot be made. So the young people need to come out. When they come out, I can guarantee you that this nation will have a new dream. Now, from the formation, uh, uh, quickly from the formation, he said something very important. He said it's only the young people that can save Nigeria. As it is I, today. I totally agree with you, but in what perspective and what concepts? Because by the time you bring someone into a political power, it's not just you being young coming into office. How do we actually get the viable ones, the ones that have the country at mind? Okay, you see, a lot of young Nigerian has the country at mind. But the challenge is the percentage of them in administration make their voice insignificant. So by the time we have, take for instance, at the Federal uh, Executive Council, there are about 42, there are about 41. Now, if we have 30 young people represented in that place. What that means is whichever decision the nation wants to achieve that must be taken, the young people can press and push through. Yes. But if you have two of them, you know, in the midst of 42 age, you know, people who are already going, you'll be surprised that we'll still be running the same cat race. And uh, about Elstin say, one of the... For you to, you know, one of the first rules that you know that there's an insanity or someone is insane is doing the same thing and expecting uh, a different result. So it's when we have a number of them that outnumber the existing structure, that's where they can be changed. But the fewer we are having, their voice can be suppressed. And that's why you see as if they are not making impact. Take, for instance, we have about six or seven states in the North Central. And Ole Yayabelo is the youngest yes, among the governors. Yes, so yes. how can he beat Otto? How can he beat Lalong? How can he beat uh, uh, the man from uh, Nasarawa? OK? But if we have five of them, they can easily say, Daddy, look, this is our generation. Let us do it like this. You know, there are, there are examples that we can cite around the world where the evidence and the presence of young people revolutionize their economy. And that is what the young people, they are to come out. They are to participate. And they need to get into the system. Now, now basically, I meant to understand that uh, the, 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 the young people in government are actually clamoring for more younger people to come so that they will have a synergy. Now, every workable solution 
in every nation, as she rightly said, comes with the young people. Yes. Now, wh what what plan do you think, or what is the blueprint do you think these young people have to work on, or are they going to create another blueprint or another formation to put this country in order? What do you see? What is feasible? Well, we don't have a design framework to bring the young people into the Nigerian political system, but there is this awareness that is ongoing that it is our time and it is our generation. We must make impact. And the only way we can make impact is when our voice, our activities is known and heard. And one of the ways our voice and our activity can be known is go to your world. Go to that political party within your world. Go and register. It costs you nothing to become a member of a political party. Participate in their meetings. Get to know what they are doing, what they are saying. Within your conferences within your association let one of you be encouraged to to participate to aspire for an office do you understand now when this is done we now say okay we are making progress but for us to say we have a framework that will bring them in look nobody gives you power nobody gives you power that is why the 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 the, the, the older generation knows the importance of power that is why they are still contesting. If there is nothing good in power, they won't contest again. Thank you, Mr. John. Uh, we'll be going on a break. When we come back, I still have this power pack with me in the studio. When we come back, the discussion continues. All right, welcome back. What is your role as a young Nigerian? Your role is to do the right thing and be obedient to the laws and regulations of the country. And of course, the topic we're discussing is the role of young Nigerians in the forthcoming 2023 election. And of course, a lot of things have been expected. And I have Mr. John Desmond with me in the studio. We've been discussing earlier and we're still on the topic. Now, Mr. John, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this moment in the sense that I have a vibrant young man like you with me in the studio that's actually saying what is actually going on. Yes. Now, I'm looking at the power and capacity of every young Nigerian. Yes. It's like we young Nigerians have already put ourselves together and decided to do something positive. We'll definitely achieve that. Yes. The reason why I'm saying this is uh, from the NSAS protest and some other activities that I've seen the young people do. Yes. Now, how can we collocate that spirit when it comes to election for these young Nigerians to put their head together despite religion and ethnic group differences? to vote the right person into power. You see, we, we can achieve that if we begin to think first the future of our country. How do we know the future is more important to where we are? Is that where we are today, what are the things we are dreaming or we have been dreaming of? Do we have it? Who are those who are supposed to give us? Have they given us? Now, if the, if the answer is no, what we need to do now is to start running, we we'll begin to test run a kind of a, a pilot program with our election. 
We don't need anybody to lead us for now. What we need to do is, just as what happened in 2015, Nigerians were tired with the PDP then, and they supported the change matter of APC, and they won the election. In 2023, they should also know now, we should also know now that, yes, we, the expectation was high in APC. 2015. But the delivering is low. Now, what do we need? We need to, along the line, begin to look for a fresh hand. Something different from what we have. L let's try it. That is a way to development. We cannot keep experiencing the same thing and thinking of getting a different result. Yes. So the young people need to come out in voting, get ready to vote, get ready to canvass, get ready to listen to all the, part, the political manifestation of uh, manifestos of all the candidates. They should find a way of getting to town hall meetings yes. and ask these people questions. You know, some people who are actually coming for president of Nigeria don't really know what is happening in Nigeria. I can guarantee you that. People don't know. I can tell you that those people who are coming now, now that I want to be president of Nigeria, a lot of them don't know what is happening in some part of Borono State. A lot of them don't know what is happening in some part of Anambra State. Now, during the elections, they are going to have an ample opportunity to visit those areas. So what the young people need to, of those areas need to do is present these things before them in form of questions and answer. Make observations to them, you know? Because one of the challenges I noticed in Nigeria is that the process of electioneering campaigning is very poor. There is no electoral to uh, aspirant communication. The aspirant just go to a state or the state capital within 10 to 15 minutes, campaign is over. And at the election day, you are expected to win the place. When they win, they don't know the core challenges Problems. of those places. Yes. And these are the things that the young people can pass across during the electioneering campaign. That is the first thing they need to do. Now, the second thing they need to do is to look among the contestants, among the candidates. Who do we think we can assess to deliver our idea, to bring our expectation to pass? It's very important. Accessibility to leadership is very important. Because that is the challenge you have in Nigeria. Like the, president, the present president, for instance. Maybe once in six months, that's when we have the president speaking to Nigerians through a press interview. That's not supposed to be. Press release. That's not supposed to be. We should have a leader that should be concerned of how to assess his people easily. So if they start with this, because we cannot achieve that dream between now and 2003, say, no, it's we're impossible. going to bring a young man to vote. No. But we can make our impact with whomever wants to be president. We can make our impact. There are also state governors. Young people can come out. There are the National Assembly. Now, another thing I'm looking at is uh, the state governors, uh, those are another set of people, because usually in Nigeria, we, 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 we elect or select, yes. I don't know how to put it, we yes. elect and select based, it's like there's a hierarchy, there's a group at which uh, this uh, number one citizens are being elected. Yeah, well, that's the, that is the electoral process. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's look like selection. Why is this selection? Because it's those that come out that are selected among them. Okay? Okay. Now, what the people want, for instance, people were saying, through, through their representative, I don't really understand why the president didn't accept to the indirect primaries. Because the people that passed that law are Nigerians. And he was saying that the candidates to people. Who are the people? We are the people. The National Assembly is the people. And the people say, oh, this is what we want. This was, this was, what, this was what was done in the Third Republic. This was what, 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 one of the best adjourned elections. This is the process that produced the various candidates. MKO and uh, uh, Tofa. Tofa. Let's yeah. the two late guys of SDP yes. and NRC. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now, when, uh, when uh, Ambody was having uh, challenges with his party in Lagos, this was what 
to this was what was used to test his popularity. And you say you are the governor. Okay, let's go for the indirect primary. If you are the governor, let the people decide who you are. Do you understand? Yes. So it's I don't I don't really understand. I don't really understand so now, why the now, president did that. That reminds me. That reminds me. So far, so good. Now, what is the National Assembly doing in in to actually uh inculcate or actually make that happen? You see, the, the present National Assembly um, had not breathed confidence in their system. Yes, they are trying their best, but some things should be challenged, and this is one of it. Because if you read along the lines of the president's remark, it said the candidate to the people. So the question is, who is the people? All of us cannot go to the parliament and sit there to make law. So we elected ourselves in form of representative. So we have spoken. Trusted people. Trusted people. So I don't, the president, the National Assembly should have challenged that. But you see, leadership is all about confidence. So maybe the present National Assembly so much believe and trusted the president that whatever I say, it's, it's okay for them. But that's not okay for us. As of course. People. And I, I see there's a, there's a battle, there's arguments, uh, you know, between the National Assembly and the presidency. I think with time that will actually push through to actually come to stay. Because I think that in the real rule is perfect. I think it's the main thing for Nigerians. Now. Yes, they are talking about the cost. You see, it's more expensive than for any aspirant to prosecute or campaign for the delegate or the, the one we call the uh, indirect primary. Mm. Because they have to buy the delegates over. Yes. But in the other one, you just test your popularity. You line up. Then you are also bringing political awareness to the people. Because on that day, everybody will go and use option A4, go and line up. So the whole community can decide, oh, today I want to be APC. You are making them, you are making children. You see, it's a political exposure that that system breeds. And that is why, as imagine how old I was as of uh, when MQ and uh, uh, NRC uh, and Bashir Tufa. And Tufa election came. But because I saw people, I saw our parents going to stay uh, to the field, our primary school there, we, we, you know, we, saw, we saw the activities. And that is how we, we began to understand politics. So that exposed the system to every person that is interested. That would have been a new way to build political culture in Nigeria. Now quickly, what is your take? So far we have few young people in political offices and appointments. Now what is your take? What is their scorecard? How can you reach them? <laughs> well, they, they, um, their scorecard, to be sincere with them so that they can upstair their game, is very poor. It's very poor. It's very poor. And uh, that brings us back to the confidence the generation going cannot have on in us. That is why they have not exited the system. Who do you want to rate? Is it from Minister of Sport to young uh, men and women who are governors of this nation? Where, where is their scorecard? Where is their scorecard? Look at the young man in a, um, a, a National Electric uh, Regulative Commission. Where is their scorecard? Look at the Minister of uh, Communication, you know, sending Nigerians out to go and uh, do NIMS enrollment during COVID. So, where is their scorecard? Is it the state governors? Or the EFCC man? Or the EFCC man, who by now I thought he should have set up offices and monitoring teams around the federal ministries to be observing all the contracts that were given to verify whether work is ongoing or not going. So where is their scorecard? They need to obstruct their game because the future belongs to them. And they, this can be seen from the ones ahead of us now. Every young man that is given any political office, take it serious, think outside the box, produce an excellent result, let the world know, let the people know that, look, we can deliver yes. if given opportunity. And you are the light that is, you are the opportunity that we have now. Everywhere, being you governor, being you minister, being you be appointee of the president, only a few of them, one or two of them are, 
uh, 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 try, especially those in public relations uh, units of uh, the appointees, they are trying their best. It, uh, those in the media sections of, of the politicians, they are <laughs> trying their best. But those in the productive side of the economy are not replicating the young generational idea in them. And they need to do this so that they can pave way for others to come in. Now, quickly before we round up, I see a stretch, and of course, I see acceptance in the two giant political parties we have in Nigeria. The PDP, the youth leader, is now officially a young man. Yeah. And I, I, it happens that there was a press briefing. I see APC also looking at the Northeast and they're looking at Borno State to give uh, the young uh, leadership of the party. And actually, a young person actually come out, came out to actually, uh, he wants to contest uh, for. For, for that position. Now, through these activities, what do you actually see? Don't you see something happening positive in 2023 among young Nigerians? Yes, a lot of positive things will come up for young people. Um, when you talk of the, their national youth uh, position, it's supposed to go for young people, just some greedy men and women who cannot contest their own age uh, offices who go and occupy the young people office. No, those are reserved, exclusively reserved for younger people to participate. And then for what PDP has done, it's a good one. I say big congratulations to uh, to them. The APC have Barista Kabir and the new guy that is coming, we pray he win. Now, when they get to that, to those offices, they should begin a program, a project to bring more people inside. They should do whatever they can do with the state governors, the local government chairman, so that more young people can get involved. If the young people, you see, the economy of the world, as it is today, is being revolutionized by young people around the world. Yes. Around the world. In fact, we have a lot of young people who have taken the grand stage in Nigeria economy. So if we can make a roadway into politics, I can assure you that this look if we have a younger president just like the former president of uh, uh is it chad that led the uh, yes okay that led the war yes. that went to the war front if we have a young look 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 at sometimes uh, when osimbajo you know when he acts sometimes you see the way if there's issue today in this state before you know osimbajo is, is there, there so already. if we have a younger president his, his level of proactiveness will be high now quickly, your word and of that's what the people need. Now quickly, time's on our side. Your word of advice and <laughs> parting words. <laughs> well, those. let's accept the young people into Nigerian political system and let the young people begin to participate. Don't sit in your house and say the system is corrupt, the system is bad. It is when you get inside that you can change the system. Don't just stay behind and criticize everybody. When you get into the system today, you may not be accepted, you may not win. Don't bring the roof down. There's another day, and that day could be your day. Yes. Thank you very much. And of course, if you're just joining us, we'll be having a fantastic period with John Desmond, of course, leader, young professionals of Nigeria. And of course, he's also an entrepreneur. And of course, we young Nigerians, we have a lot. They always say the future belongs to the young people. We need to stand up now and start working towards it. Do keep a date with me, Sam Station, where we'll bring you fresh edition of Viewer Pause. Bye for now. <laughs>